Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show. So we're out here, we're at one of my current projects. Um, I don't have a formal name on this. We're just gonna run with the, the kitchen great room remodel. We're doing a, it's basically a renovation project. It's no addition. We're just reconfiguring a whole bunch of stuff inside here. But uh, that doesn't mean it's not an exciting project. Um, I'm working with a great builder, uh, Modern Renovations. You can find him out on Instagram. He's doing some really good work. This is my first time working with him, and I got to tell you, right up till now, it's been a charm. So it's a smooth sailing, great guy to work with. And uh, so, as you can see, I'm standing in what used to be the old kitchen. As you can see, also, we changed the ceiling. Now, one of the cool things about ranches is the fact that there's nothing up above us except usually some big vacant attic. So as an architect, there's always an opportunity of how do we climb up into that attic with a ceiling and add some intrigue to the project that we're doing. So we can go around, we're gonna, we're gonna add some doors, we're gonna add some windows, whole new kitchen, et cetera. But I think the thing that really kicks this off, that's kind of the, the, the topper, is what we're doing in the ceiling here. So like I said, you can see there used to be a flat ceiling, there used to be a stairway here. There was walls here. We took that all out. We put this nice big beam in there that uh, now offers us the opportunity to have this kitchen communicate with the great room. Also by putting in that big beam, there's a couple things happening. You can see up inside the attic there, we actually installed a two by four bearing wall. So this beam is doing a couple things. It's carrying the ceiling but now it's also sized to carry the roof load across here. And we're gonna go back in the studio, we're gonna dive into the specifics of the engineering behind there, but by putting that bearing wall in, it freed up structurally what we can do in this space. So we came in here and you can see, we kept that same pitch for half the size of the kitchen and we just um, did a mirror image of it on the other side here. And now that gave us this nice, I don't know, we're probably on the order of about 18 feet here by about 12 feet of space where when you're in the kitchen, even though we have this nice wide open floor plan, you're gonna be very distinctly um, understanding that you're in the kitchen because you're inside this volume of space. And we're gonna clad that in wood, we're gonna have some nice accent ceiling joists in here that are non-structural and it's going to finish out beautiful. We got a nice big island going in here and, and cabinetry windows. Stay tuned. We're going to return here when we're doing the finishes, but I wanted to get through this structural stuff with you. So let's go back. We'll go back to the studio. I'll pull up the section drawing and uh, we'll go through that with Big Red. See you there. Hey everybody. Welcome back. We're back here at the studio. We'll dive into a couple of drawings here. Got the good friend Big Red to join us. He's uh, gonna offer up some help here to help us understand things a little bit better. One of the things I wanted to talk about, you know, renovations, remodeling work. Um, you know, some architects prefer new construction while it is easier um, in many respects and there is something cool about building something new. There's actually some pretty rewarding uh, results that come from remodeling. So, you know, one, you have this frame of reference. So, you know, you have a really bad kitchen, a really bad living room, and we go in and reconfigure it and turn it from this to that. And clients go, oh my God, wow, that's awesome. And, you know, we didn't make the space any bigger. We just really enhance the space. So um, I think the ceiling is really gonna make a difference in that space, so. Let's dive into the drawings. Let's take a look about what exactly what we're doing there. So let's have at it. All right, everybody. So broke out a couple plans here. We'll uh, zip through a few of them. Um, the first plan you're looking at here is, this is what I call a coordination plan. So you can see Big Red kind of got substituted, but we have a series of red lines. Well, the red lines are the new work superimposed on the old plan. So you can see the old stair here, and you can see how it really divided up the kitchen and the, the dining room, where the only really access to that dining room was 
through here. And then you have this really long dining room. You have this kind of galley kitchen that had kind of an awkward space there. Little powder room tucked in the corner there. Um, and, you know, the, the little peninsula there trying to do something. But, you know, you really didn't have a whole lot of cabinetry. You, had, you know, that and this with the refrigerator right in the middle, which was horrible. And again, no relationship, no ability to look outside. One little measly window there. Um, had some decent windows here, but uh, that dining area. A closet here, so, you know, the front door didn't really have a good relationship to any of that space. And the front door is actually, you know, coming into a space here where, um, you know, it's basically the back hall to the bedrooms. So you're really entering into the bedroom hallway, which was horrible. Uh, it's not here, but later in the newer version, you'll see we actually added a closet here to break out some privacy here between those bedrooms and bathrooms. But, uh, you know, we took that stair out because this room was this nice long room. It made sense to uh, just throw that stair in down at the end of there, throw that in, shortens up that room. But getting rid of this then gives us the ability to put, you know, this nice island in here. And now we have these views out to the back. You can see we took out some of the glass there. We're going to replace it with a whole new glass wall and uh, basically open this up to one large room, get rid of that um, bathroom and uh, have that as one great living space. So we bring the uh, new floor plan in. You can see, you know, we open that space up. You can see the kitchen island here has a really great relationship with the kitchen to, you know, all of this glass that's happening in back there. The stairs are now open. You can go down freely. You come in the front door. We have some additional cabinetry here, but you can look over and see what's happening. If you're in the kitchen, you get to see who's coming in. We added a closet here to help close down that back hallway. You know, so someone in the kitchen or sitting at the island here doesn't see somebody going in and out of the bathroom or, you know, getting that view to the toilet. Extended that kitchen, got rid of the bathroom, put it there, relocated the bathroom out back here near the office space and mudroom. And we were able to insert a small pantry that'll have some associative cabinetry in there and shelving for some additional storage. So, um, works out great. And then, you know, to, Add to that, we have that ceiling that we were talking about, which is basically right here. All right. And you can see we added a ridge down the middle here. And then we're going to have some ceiling joists that are non-structural help break that up. But in the scheme of things, this is this nice, big, wide open space, but we're able to give the kitchen an identity by putting this ceiling above the kitchen proper. Now the refrigerator and the pantry cabinet, that'll be underneath this flat ceiling over there. The nook will be under this flat ceiling that starts there and goes that way. But uh, it'll really uh, offer some intrigue and, you know, offer an identity to that kitchen. So really interesting stuff. Let's take a look at uh, how we can make that possible structurally. So you saw in the video out at the job site, one of the things that I talked about was the beauty of ranches is nothing's up above you. So you have the ability to climb up here and take advantage and offer some intrigue in that ceiling. So you can see there's our, there's our kitchen island or our kitchen. There's our kitchen island and cabinetry goes back to there. And basically this is the overhang there. So you'll be able to have some stools, you know, hanging out there. But, you know, someone in the kitchen here, now they get that view out through that back window. Here we have those ceiling joists that, you know, they, they help us understand the ceiling from the rest of the, the spaces in setting up that datum line. But because the ceiling punches up above that, and we're going to line that with some nice wood finish, and uh, it offers a little bit of intrigue. 
to that kitchen space. And the way we did it was we took out, remember there was a, that wall and stairway that used to be here that was basically holding up the ceiling joist in the middle. So you can see we took them out. We put in three 18 inch LVLs and put them in there. Now those LVLs are doing a couple things. One, they're holding up the ceiling and the insulation, but two, they're also holding up this bearing wall. Now, why that bearing wall? Well, remember in one of my earlier videos, there's loads that come down on the roof, right? Vertical loads. And there's the weight of the roof itself. There's the snow and uh, live loads that get imposed on the roof. Well, when that happens, this ridge wants to fall down. And when it falls down, these walls want to kick out. All right. So the way we keep those walls from kicking out is we put ceiling joists across here. They overlap in the middle and get nailed together and then they get nailed at the rafters. But those ceiling joists resist the wall from kicking out. But because we now went in here and we wanted to offer some volume to that ceiling, well, we took that ceiling joist out. Now, I will confess, originally I thought we would just make the decorative ceiling joists structural, but in reviewing it with the structural engineer, he said, you know, it would probably be easier. We'll just put a bearing wall in here. Now, what that means is this load now goes into the bearing wall, goes into the beam, the beam takes it to the column, the column goes down into here, and then we have new footings down in the basement and the ground resists and ground basically holds up the roof. So what that bearing wall does is it resists the falling of that ridge and the load that's being imposed on the roof. So if we resist it at this location, that means we don't have any kick out because if this can't fall, that can't kick out. So basically by providing this resistance, in the center line of the house, we change the dynamics of that roof and basically turn these into just simple beams. And we basically take the tension out of this member. And because we take the tension out of there, then I can come in here and I can take these out, put in decoratives and put in our decorative ceiling here, all because we put in that two by four wall. And you know, when I, when I was talking with the builder, he actually said, hey, that was real easy. I mean, we're not to make trivial um, light of his work, but it literally was, I don't know, about 18 feet of uh, two by four wall that they had to put in. But uh, then that, that saves them a whole lot of work. They were able to actually level out the ridge and push it up where in a couple places where it was dipping. And then we put that new work on that 18 inch LVL. So. So there you have it. That's what I got for uh, details and that's how we're doing it. So stay tuned. We got more to come on this project. All right, everybody. So that, that wraps it up. That's everything that we need to know about renovating this kitchen ceiling. So that's the ins and outs of the aesthetics, the structure, all that good stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I have a lot of videos online here at the Build Show Network. If you haven't seen them, I suggest you go check them out. Got some pretty cool stuff across the boards there. A lot of good learning experience. I try my hardest to give you some in-depth explanation beyond the, hey, it just looks pretty. And, uh, you know, provide some education there, share the knowledge that I have. So hopefully you enjoy it and, uh, you know, go beyond me. There's my good friends, Matt, Jake, Wade, Brent. They're all there dropping knowledge, sharing information great resources. Um, if you want to uh, get some more from me, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at Stephen Basic Architect. And uh, my daughter also who works for me or with me. And uh, she's at Alexandra Basic. You know, check her out on Instagram. And uh, she's posting a lot of really good stuff. I got her working on some really cool projects. And uh, lastly, uh, my good friends, Jake and uh, Peter, colleagues of mine, they join me in uh, hosting the Young Builder podcast. So you can find us every couple weeks. We drop a new episode and uh, 
the Unbuilder podcast is all about taking some complex uh, thoughts about building science and breaking them down and unbuilding them and talking about just how do we uh, get a better understanding of what we're doing in the industry? How can we improve it? Some thoughts, past experiences. So look for that every couple of weeks. Um, it's on all the major channels, iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff. So you can find us there. But until next time, um, Steve Basic from The Build Show. Long live our buildings. <laughs>